So this is a sample um, story map here of a shopping website. So what James explained to us or called themes is what we will call initiatives. It's the same thing. Even though this doesn't really represent the initiative, this actually started from epics. And then this one, product search, product page, check out, are what we will categorize as epics because they are big. We see them as, okay, we have the ability to break them down further. So, but right at the top here, whatever these bigger, whatever we are trying to do is, is the initiative, what James called as themes. So you hear some organizations calling them themes, some call them um, initiative. And then after, under that, we have epics. And then other epics, um, we, I mean, some other organizations under epic don't have user stories. I mean, no, they have features. And then under features, you now have user stories, but not all organizations. Like for example, Jira doesn't even have, um, um, Jira has user stories to epics. That's what Jira has. But normally, the way it normally works is epics, features, user stories, and then task. That's how it is. Now, looking at this, these are the epics, and then these are the different user stories. So this is a story that this thing is telling. So the way this works is, okay, they'll have a meeting. Like we have a, um, a story mapping meeting tomorrow, a working session tomorrow for story mapping in my, my team. So what, how it works is you can ask a stakeholder or a representative of the customer who know, who has a good understanding of their vision, what they are trying to achieve, to tell the story. As they start telling the story on what they are trying to achieve or what they desire, at that time, it's a very collaborative um, period. You would see dev developers, with everybody would just pick their stickies. Let's say if it's an in-person cloud um, session, workplace session, or let's assume that it's an in-person workshop session. Everybody just pick their sticky notes. As he is telling the story on what he wants, they are writing them down on the sticky, just like this one, and putting them on the wall. And it ends up coming out like this, as he's telling that story. And then if it's a virtual environment, like online, they will typically use mirror, like what um, Godi used on Monday or Muro to do that, because he has all of these stickies like that. So as he's telling the story, that's how they would represent what he's saying, you know. And now, what is the purpose? What is the, how, what, what's the value of doing this? Because some people will be asking, why not just write the user stories and put them in the product backlog? Yes, we can do that. But now, the problem with just writing user stories and dropping them in the product backlog is that, yeah, you can have, have all of these user stories, but it is difficult to make a decision on what comes first, on what the priority is. Exactly. But if you do this story mapping, you take your time. A lot of teams avoid doing them because they think it's complicated, which is really not. Because they just write what the person who knows the product is saying. You just your own is just to write it and stick it there. And if the person thinks, oh no, it doesn't make sense to change it, that's just what it is. So now um, the value of this is you representing these like this visually, everybody's seeing it. It helps you make that decision on what the priority should be. Because now you see that, okay, you will need to, um, yeah, you will need to filter by category before you can even filter by color. Because this is a, what they plan to release in, in, in the first release. They want to release all of these in the first release. So now just by doing this, sticking all of these, you understand that, okay, you cannot go and be working on user story filter by color when you've not completed user story filter by category. So now you know how to prioritize. So you know that, okay, this filter by category should fall in the first print. So this is the, the main value for that. And just by doing this as well, that's the dependency we are talking about. It helps you sequence the work. And as you identify dependencies, it helps you also identify some kind of impediments that you may not have been able to identify just by thinking that you know this thing in your head and not visually represented. And then looking at this one, all of the one we just saw in um, this slide 21 here, I, I just added this just to help you see how it, it um, boils down into the sprints. So now in sprints one, you're seeing that 
all of these stories here, you want to do them in sprint one. And then eventually after sprint, um, yeah, sprints, let's assume that this was sprint one. Sprint one, sprint two, sprint three, sprint four. You now have the release. Let's say you release every four sprints, for example. You now have everything you want to release. So yes, the purpose for this thing is to visually is to tell the, the story of the, the, the user, how the user okay. interacts with the product and it really helps you to make that decision on what the priority should be, number one. Secondly, it helps you identify dependencies, number two. And then thirdly, it really helps you people to catch some impediments. And just by doing this, it helps the developers as well to understand the product better because that conversation that you're looking for is happening at that time. So it helps you to really understand that product and which will guarantee you to produce the right thing to your customers. That's another thing. And then another key thing that people really don't talk about, I'm not sure, which is what happens on the ground is just by doing this, because sometimes these stakeholders have set very, very unrealistic um, expectations. They think that the team can just do magic and deliver things. <laughs> but just by doing this, when the stakeholders are there, they clearly see that, oh, it's bigger than what they thought. You know, so now they are not just saying things based on opinion. It's now based on facts because they have data, a diagram.